I'm Will. Welcome to my Blend for Web channel, where we cover the cutting edge of WebGL. Fasten your seat belts, kids. The 3D internet has arrived. So what I'm looking at here is one of the new additions to Blend for Web. This is part of their new update, 15.09. And so this is an application to control bones. It is a bone API. And so if you uh, want to find this, in your software development kit if you just open the index and scroll down to code snippets and you can open the bone API to find this and you can hit this link down here to open the code and look at the HTML code and the JavaScript file that runs this application and so this should give you some idea of how procedural bone animation can work if you're looking at this version, probably uh, one of the things you'll want to know is how to get it downloaded in case you haven't already. So if you come to the blend for web download page, you will see on the top, you see an, the add on for blender and the blend for web free distribution. So I believe what you're going to be wanting is the blend for web free distribution. The add on, um, what the add-on is, is, is it allows you to export into a self-contained HTML document, but it doesn't get into some of the other programming um, and application capabilities. The, the Blend for Web SDK also has the ability to export into the HTML format, but it also includes the full software development kit. So I, I suppose an artist who never wanted to touch code could just work with the add-on only but um, what I work with is the software development kit which of course includes the add-on so um, for the purposes of, of the videos I do this is what I work with so we're looking at uh, the download version 15.09 now this is newly released and something to be aware of is that if you scroll down you can see prior releases and when they have a new release available, what they will do sometimes is release some uh, release candidates. And so you might say see some pre-releases listed down here when, when they're not listed up here yet. So if you do hear about a, uh, a pre-release being available for download, you might find it here, whereas you wouldn't find it up here. And so down here, you'll see there's an add-on in the SDK. And so the, keep in mind that the SDK does include the add-on. So it, that's not real obvious just from looking at the links. So what I work with is the, S, the SDK, which, and, the, and it's the free version. So that's why it says free. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some of the uh, new additions in this release. One of the things we will want to look at is if you if you come to your index page, and the way you get here, by the way, if you're not sure, make sure you're on blend for web here, and come over to your export and hit open SDK. Now, up at the top of your page here, you will see some new additions. The first one is the project manager. So if we open that, what this does is it lists all of the applications currently in the software development kit. And these are all the examples that ship with the download. And what this is for is uh, for organizing your applications. And so you'll probably be wanting to add your own. So uh, we'll use this link right here to add our own project. And we'll type new. And we'll just type in... Uh, We'll just call this my new project. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and make uh, that the title as well. And I don't think I need an author at this point. So we'll go ahead and we'll create our application starter files, which would not really be necessary if all you're going to do is the HTML export. Um, create scene starter files. I think uh, ditto for that. Down here, you'll see an option for bundled project, and I'm going to select that. So if you don't select that, it's going to uh, disperse your application directories in with the other SDK directories, and it will give you a full report of all the directories it created and where they went. But if you're creating multiple smaller applications like what I do, you'll probably want to just bundle the project in a single folder. And so that's what I'm going to do here, and uh, engine binding type will leave that default, and we'll go ahead and hit create. And what that did, if we if we go ahead and uh, go back to our, we'll go ahead and 
return to our project manager, now we have my new project. And so it's what it has done is created a folder in apps dev, uh, my new project right here. So there it is, and it's created all these files just uh, as a starting point. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, one ability this has is to convert media file types. So for example, if I put an OGG file in here and I needed it to uh, be converted to an MP4 file, with the OGG and the MP4, I believe I can cover the majority of all browsers and it applies to video files as well. So if you look over here, um, on the right hand side, we have a convert resources option. So I'm gonna go ahead and click convert resources and it converts uh, the resources from one to the other. So I think it, it basically looks at what you've got and says, okay, well, you've got these file types, but in order to cover the browsers, you're gonna need these file types. And so it went ahead and took my OGG file and converted it to an MP4 file. And I believe it would do it the, the reverse. Let's just do a little experiment here and find out. So let's hit delete. Let's delete that one. Let's try renaming that. Water1.mp4. And we'll go ahead and... Uh, So let's, go, let's try converting resources again. And resources converted. And okay, so now it has taken my MP4 and converted it to an OGG. So it'll, it'll do the conversion either direction. It'll just look at what you've got and determine what you need and make the conversion all for you. So that is super convenient. Uh, it's a great addition to the SDK. Um, the other thing to look at from the index file here is the WebGL report. So that's gonna be up here at the top. If you just click on that, it's just gonna look uh, at your browser and tell you uh, how it complies with WebGL. So I believe what you could do if you wanted to check this on some other browsers. So if I look here, this is gonna be in deploy WebGL report. So if I go to uh, blend for web, deploy WebGL report, and here's the index file, and I can hit uh, open with, let's try the uh, Microsoft Edge, and there's the Microsoft Edge report, and it will give you the details for Microsoft Edge. One thing you should be aware of is how to find the release notes. Um, that's one thing you need to look at when a new release comes out. So to find the release notes, open your SDK, and just uh, go to uh, the user manual and just read. And on the left side is an index and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and there you will find the release notes. And that will give you a list of uh, what changes occurred in this release. But one thing I did wanna show you while we are on the subject is the uh, some of the new nodes, some of the new logic nodes. So I'm just gonna come over here and to get to this, make sure I'm blend for web and uh, we're gonna come over here to our uh, scene panel and we're gonna go ahead and uh, enable the logic editor and create uh, a new node tree and then one of your windows you'll want to uh, change to node editor and so we'll come down here and there are there are more than one kind of node so we're gonna be looking at logic nodes so click that and then uh, here we will select the uh, the node tree that we that we created over here. So we'll select that one. And so here's our node tree and it by default puts the entry point node in place for you. And uh, if you look at some of my other videos on nodes, I have covered this, but so I will only take a look at some of the new changes they have here. So to add new nodes, you come down here to add and you can also just do shift A logic node. And so here is the entry point, which is already here. You only need one of those at the beginning and it's only used once. And so if you just, uh, run through some of these uh, nodes, it will give you sort of an idea of what's possible with dealing with logic without programming. So this gives you a, a lot of flexibility, um, playing animations, timelines, page parameters. You can hide on objects, show an object, uh, page redirect, which is essentially a, a link to another web page, uh, math operations, variable store, so it en enables you to store uh, a variable a conditional jump and what what jump means is move on to the next step so for example what a conditional jump would do is it would take uh it would come from wherever your input was and it would it would use the operator that you chose equal greater or less than and then you would have uh 
you know, greater if this number is greater than that number, then um, if it's if you get a true, it goes one direction. If you get a false, it goes another direction. So that gives you kind of an idea of some of the the uh, abilities we have here: select and play, uh, select and play animation, app shape key. So that enables you to change the mesh shape or uh, do mesh animation. So yeah, we'll definitely have to do a video on on all on just these just to cover that. Okay, folks, this is awesome. It's open source and it's the future. So I encourage you to come join me on the blend for web forums where we can talk about it. And as always, check for useful links in the description.